Apes. Comic books are filled with apes. Why is that? Well, apparently some DC comic issue, I don't know which one, sold really well back in the Silver Age. And it happened to have an ape on the cover. Was the ape the reason for the comic success? DC sure thought so, and that's how the ape craze was born. Considering many of these apes are villains, I figured they'd be perfect for a list. So join me as I rank the 5 greatest ape supervillains comics have ever produced. Of course, these are just my personal opinions, feel free to write your own list in the comments. Number 5. Titano the Super Ape Titano is one of Superman's lesser known foes, but back in the Silver Age, during the ape craze, he was actually a pretty big deal. Like most Superman characters, Titano has been retconned and revamped countless times, and there are therefore many different versions of him. The original version though was a chimpanzee named Toto. Toto was a performing ape known for his unusually high intelligence, for a chimpanzee that is. While he was in Metropolis, reporter Lois Lane covered his acts, and Toto really took a liking to her. The two thus formed a special bond and became friends. Later, as part of a publicity stunt, Toto was sent into space in a satellite. While orbiting Earth, two meteors, one made of uranium and one of kryptonite, collided near the satellite. Toto was thus bathed in radiation, and upon returning to Earth, the once small chimpanzee transformed into a giant ape monster. As if that wasn't enough, Toto, now dubbed Titano, also gained the ability to shoot kryptonite blasts from his eyes. Obviously very inconvenient for the Man of Steel. Titano is not evil, but he does create a whole lot of mayhem and destruction, simply because he doesn't understand better. That's what happens when a chimpanzee, no matter how smart, turns into a giant powerhouse. Titano is a very tragic character because of this. This tragic aspect and his connection to Lois, the only person who really seems to care about him, are usually present in all versions of the character. Sad and misunderstood, Titano is definitely a standout among comic book ape villains. And he shoots kryptonite from his eyes. A giant ape that shoots kryptonite from his eyes. That is pretty badass. Number 4. Nagin the Gorilla Man the only Marvel villain on the list, which is not very surprising. That seems to be the way these lists always go. Anyway, Negan was actually created before Marvel was even Marvel, back in their Atlas comics days, the 1950s. He made his first, and for a long time, only appearance in a horror anthology comic. Dr. Arthur Negan was a mad surgeon who experimented with interspecies organ transplants, like transplanting a dog's lungs into a sheep. He then began to involve humans as well, and made a fortune giving all sickly rich men the organs of healthy gorillas. The gorillas eventually got their revenge though, as they abducted Nagin and somehow transplanted his head onto a gorilla body. Yeah, I know, it doesn't really make any sense. In that original story, he only appears with his gorilla body for the final panel. It was obviously meant as a sort of morbid punchline, whatever you're supposed to call it. It was the way these horror anthology comics always ended. Nagin was also clearly only meant to be a one-shot character. But against all odds, he returned in the 1970s. He was now made into the leader of the Headmen, a gang of bizarre villains including Jerry the man with the shrunken bones, Chando the mystic, and of course the lovely Ruby Thursday, whom I've made an entire video about. Ruby is my favorite of the Headmen, but my second favorite would be Nagin. How can you not like this guy? A mad doctor with his head on a gorilla body. For some reason his gorilla body is also often colored blue. This may be a mistake due to the color techniques of the time, but I actually like it. The blue color makes him even even weirder. Yeah, what else can I say? A fantastically bizarre and crazy character. Number 3. Gorilla Grodd you may be surprised at Grodd's ranking here, as he is one of the flashiest, most iconic villains, and probably the most popular and well-known ape villain in all of comics. Most people will probably put him as their number one, but he's never really been my favorite. So Grodd was originally just an ordinary gorilla living somewhere in the jungles of Africa. One day though, a meteorite or a spaceship, depending on a version, crashed in the jungle. The radiation from this meteorite or spaceship granted all the gorillas in the jungle super intelligence, far beyond that of any human, including telepathic powers. These super smart gorillas then created their own highly advanced secret civilization in the jungle, Gorilla City. Grodd, however, the black sheep of Gorilla City, chose to use his powers for the sake of evil. Hating humans and feeling that gorillas, most importantly him, was superior, he made it his goal to subjugate the human race and take over the world. Basically a power mad ape. Now why don't I like this simian flash rogue quite as much as everyone else do? For starters, he looks pretty boring. Most of the others 
characters on this list have very distinct designs, but Grodd is just a gorilla. The main reason though is because Grodd is a bit too simple. Like I said, he's a power mad ape. And that's really it. Despite his popularity, Grodd isn't a very complex rogue, at least not usually. A power mad gorilla with super intelligence and telepathic abilities is a very entertaining character though. And I certainly can't deny that Grodd is a lot of fun. He's obviously also a pretty odd villain for the Flash to fight. He doesn't really fit in with the rest of the rogues gallery. And that's a good thing as it makes him stand out more. A speedster versus a super smart gorilla. Yeah, that is an odd concept. And for that, I love it. Number 2. Monsieur Mala. Monsieur Mala, the most sophisticated ape of them all, is an enemy of the most bizarre superhero team in DC Comics, the Doom Patrol. As such, Mala is a perfect fit for their rogues gallery. Mala is a member of the Brotherhood of Evil. Not the Brotherhood of Evil mutants, just the Brotherhood of Evil. The Brotherhood are the arch enemies of the Doom Patrol. A small but very deadly band of strange supervillains hellbent on, what else? World domination. When isn't it about world domination? Their leader is the Brain, the disembodied brain of a French criminal mastermind. Mala was originally just an ordinary gorilla, but the brain performed experiments upon him, granting him a great intellect, including the ability to speak. He's not super smart like Grodd though. Dubbed Mala, the sophisticated gorilla thus became the brain's second in command and his most trusted member in the brotherhood. A disembodied brain and a speaking gorilla. Can it get more comic booky? In later years, Mala grew more philosophical and developed a penchant for quoting literature and famous philosophers. He also took to wearing a red beret and arming himself to the teeth with guns and ammo. Why? I don't know, but it sure is awesome. It was also revealed that Mala and the Brain had grown to love each other. And I mean love love. The disembodied Brain and the talking gorilla were in love. Since then, Mala's main goal has been to find a body for his lover boy so the two can finally truly be together. Yeah, that is weird. In fact, it doesn't get any weirder. The relationship between Mala and the Brain is both hilarious and kinda touching. Here are these supervillains who used to strive for world domination, but now all they want is to be able to be together. Mala is not evil, at least not any longer. He's just a lovesick monkey. He's also got the most entertaining personality of any ape villain, with all that philosophical talk. Plus the red beret and those guns. How can you not love this simian? And now for the greatest ape villain of them all, in my opinion. Number 1. The Ultra Humanite. Despite being my favorite ape villain, the Ultra Humanite isn't always an ape. Introduced in Action Comics in 1939, the Humanite was Superman's original arch nemesis. A mad scientist with a frail body but a brilliant mind, the Humanite planned to conquer the entire world. Naturally. After several encounters with the Man of Steel, the Humanite transferred his brain into the body of actress Dolores Winters, thus beginning what would become his main gimmick, body swapping. The Humanite soon disappeared after that though and was replaced Placed by Lex Luthor as Superman's arch enemy. We didn't see the character until about 40 years later when he finally returned, still in the body of Dolores Winters. Shortly after this revival, the Humanite finally took on the form of which he is most famous for, and which grants him a spot on his list, an albino gorilla. In this simian guise, the Humanite was more powerful than ever, both brains and brawn, and he also began to drift away from the Superman rogues gallery, battling many other heroes, including the entire Justice League and the Justice Society. In more modern times, he's been given a new, revamped and more in-depth origin story, introducing the albino gorilla from the start. He's also formed a specific rivalry with our favorite chesty superheroine, Power Girl. At one point, he even tried to steal Power Girl's body. Who can blame him? Due to the humanite's body swapping gimmick, he's actually taken on many different forms throughout the decades, including a giant ant and a T-Rex. Despite that though, his most famous and most frequently used form is that of the albino albino gorilla. An albino gorilla with a big deformed brain. What an awesome visual. I love his personality too, a very twisted and deranged guy. How can you not love a crazy scientist who's placed his brain in an albino gorilla's body? With his new origin from Power Girl, the character is also a bit more sympathetic and we can almost understand his mad motivations. So there you have it, my top 5 ape supervillains. Tell me yours in the comments. I asked you guys for help in suggesting western themed supervillains. And this actually turned out to be very helpful, as you guys suggested a ton of candidates. So thanks for that. After I've done quite a lot of reading, the next entry in this series will most likely be the top 5 western themed supervillains. Until then, as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.